Today, I'm going to show you how to set up your new GoPro Hero 11 properly, what you should know about your new GoPro and how to achieve good results quickly. This guide contains all the important information you need to get great shots in a short amount of time. In addition to the GoPro itself, the Hero 11 package contains a battery, a charging cable, a curved adhesive mount, a mounting buckle and a thumb screw. And the adhesive mount is curved so that you can attach it optimally to a helmet. The supplied accessories are therefore sufficient to attach the GoPro to a helmet. However, the helmet mount is by no means the optimal GoPro mount, but we will come to that a little later. What is missing in the package, however, in order to be able to take your first shots with the GoPro is a micro SD card. Unfortunately, you can't use just any SD card with your GoPro, but you should use an SD card with a speed rating of V30 or UHS-3. Personally, I usually use these SD cards from SanDisk, either a SanDisk Extreme or an Extreme Pro. By the way, you can find links to all the accessories I talk about in this video in the video description. To insert the SD card and battery, you need to open the side door of your GoPro. To do this, simply press down on the edge of the side door with your nail. This can be a little difficult at first. The SD card slot is located on the right side. Insert the SD card by sliding it in with the upper side facing inwards. Now insert the battery. The connectors of the battery must face upwards. Next, you should fully charge your GoPro. While charging, a small red light will appear on the top left of the back. When this light goes out, the GoPro is fully charged. The first charge of a battery should normally be complete. You close the side door by simply pressing it shut and pushing the lower part upwards. It is very important that you no longer see a red stripe here. This would indicate that the door is not fully closed. If you use it in water, water could get in and damage your GoPro. By the way, the door can be easily removed by pulling it upwards. If you press the top edge into the small iron rod, you can also easily reattach it. Before we switch on our GoPro, I just want to show you two or three things about the body. Your GoPro has two buttons, the shutter button on the top and the mode button on the side under the 11 black. These slots underneath are the water drain, which is supposed to allow for an improvement in audio quality after using water. It is not a door that you can open. On the bottom, you'll find a pair of folding fingers that allow you to easily attach the GoPro to a mount using the thumb screw. Next to the folding fingers is a speaker and at the front under the lens as well as on the top you will find two microphones. Before you switch on your GoPro for the first time, you should install the GoPro Quick app on your smartphone. You can also control your GoPro completely via your smartphone, but you should also install the Quick app because you can update the firmware of your GoPro with it. And I would definitely do that right at the beginning. In the past, GoPro has repeatedly fixed bugs and added features via software updates. There are several ways to update the software of your GoPro, but the way via the smartphone is the easiest. You now switch on your GoPro by pressing the mode button. When you switch on your GoPro, for the first time, you can choose your language. Then you have to accept the terms of use and you can decide if you want to activate GPS. In this way, information about the location or speed can be saved in your footage. Now, as predicted, the GoPro wants to connect to your smartphone. If a firmware update is available, you will be informed and you can install an update immediately. The update process with the smartphone is simple and self-explanatory. It is only important that you do not switch off your GoPro during the update. As I said, you can control the GoPro completely via your your smartphone and change all settings with the quick app. But today we're going to look at the handling of the camera itself and we're going to look at all the features on the camera. For this reason I close the app and we take a closer look at the menu of the Hero 11. The GoPro is currently in the so-called easy mode. This mode offers hardly any setting options and is really only intended for those who don't want to spend a lot of time with their GoPro but simply want to take a few quick shots. But since we are taking a closer look at the settings of the GoPro today, we will deactivate the easy mode in a moment. If you swipe to the left or right, you can switch between the three recording modes of the GoPro. There is video, photo and time-lapse on the left. If you swipe up from the bottom, you can view your footage. As you can see, there are none at the moment. And if you swipe down from the top, you get to the menu with the camera settings. There are two pages here. The first page that opens right at the beginning is the dashboard. Here you can quickly and easily make important changes. Since these are very important features, I will explain them briefly. You can activate the voice control of the GoPro with this first icon. The GoPro can be controlled by voice commands. For example, you can start and stop a recording with a voice command. Here you can switch the beep sound of the GoPro on and off, which can sometimes be important if it could be perceived as annoying. With this button, you activate the quick capture mode. Quick capture means that if your GoPro is switched off, you can immediately start recording in the last settings you made by pressing the shutter button. So you don't have to switch on the camera first and then press record. If you stop recording with the 
the shutter button, the camera will automatically turn off. Quick Capture is an extremely useful feature. It allows you to significantly extend battery life, because the camera does not have to be switched on all the time to take a quick shot. Here on the right, you can activate the screen lock to prevent the menu from being activated when your GoPro is in your pocket, for example. Since I always work with Quick Capture, I rarely use the screen lock. Here you can set what is displayed on the front screen. By default, actual screen is activated. The image is displayed in exactly the format in which the GoPro records. Unfortunately, the front screen does not have the same format as a normal video file. For this reason, the image displayed is relatively small and there are black bars at the top and bottom. If you want to use the entire display, you can activate the full screen mode. The image is simply cut off on the left and right. The displayed image is now bigger and it no longer corresponds to the actual recording and can therefore be somewhat misleading. For this reason, I prefer actual screen. You can also display only the status of the camera or deactivate the front display completely. If you hold your GoPro vertically, the image rotates and you can start shooting in portrait mode. Especially if you use a pole and don't hold the camera perfectly straight when you start recording, you can also unintentionally start recording in portrait mode. This is annoying, it has happened to me frequently. To prevent this, you can lock the orientation here. This way the orientation does not change automatically when you turn your camera. At the bottom right, you can activate the max lens mode. The Max Lens Mod is an additional lens with an extremely wide field of view that you can buy as an accessory. Without the lens, of course, you don't need this mode. If you now swipe to the left, the second page of the menu opens. Here you can deactivate the Easy Mode. To do this, select Pro under Controls. The Video Mode is currently set to Highest. This means that the camera can shoot in the best possible quality. If a long battery life is more important to you than optimum quality, you can also set the Video Mode to Extended Battery. This automatically adjusts the capture settings so that the GoPro consumes less battery. The resolution and the frame rate are reduced. In most cases, however, I would recommend high quality. Here on the right is the menu for the basic settings of the camera. Before we take a closer look at the shooting modes, I would like to briefly show you which of these settings are particularly important and not necessarily self-explanatory. Under general, you will find the setting anti-flicker. It says 60 Hz. If you live outside the US or Canada and take shots in artificial light, this setting can cause the light in the shot to flicker strongly. Strongly. To prevent this, you should set anti-flicker to 50 Hz. That is only outside the US and Canada. But be aware, this will also change the available frame rates. But we'll get to that in a moment. Under voice control and commands, you will find a list of all the voice commands with which you can control your GoPro. At the bottom under reset, you can format your SD card. You should also do this at regular intervals. This increases the reliability of the camera. Ok, let's now take a look at the different shooting modes. You can close the menu with the mode button on the side. This is the user interface in video mode. Here at the bottom, you can see the current capture settings. If I press the shutter button, the camera will shoot with the preset standard in 5.3K with 30 frames per second and the field of view white. On the left and right, you see four shortcuts. You can change and customize these shortcuts. They are used to quickly and easily change important shooting settings. If you tap on the main field at the bottom, the presets menu opens. You can use the presets to quickly change the settings depending on the situation. For example, there is the preset Ultra Slow Mo. When you activate it, the capture settings change so that the camera is optimally set up for extreme slow motion shots. Of course, you can also edit the individual presets and adapt them to your own preferences. And if you want, you can create your own new preset by tapping on the icon in the top right hand corner. I will now show and explain the most important settings by editing the standard preset. To do this, I tap on the pen to the right of standard. And now the actual settings menu opens. The most important settings are in the first line. The first setting refers to the resolution and the frame rate. Resolution simply means how many pixels your recording will have. Normally, the higher, the better. So the best possible resolution would be 5.3K. Your GoPro clearly achieves the best image quality at this resolution. Already in 4K, the image quality is significantly reduced. However, the highest resolution usually also has disadvantages. For example, fewer options for the frame rates or poorer performance in low light. The frame rate, on the other hand, which you can set here below, refers to how many frames per second your camera takes when recording. You can imagine that more frames per second look smoother. From about 60 frames per second onwards, there is hardly any difference. However, more frames per second are also necessary if you want to shoot slow motion. For example, with 120 frames per second, you can create about a 4 times slow motion shot. However, more frames per second also lead to larger files and in certain cases, 
to reduce the image quality. Therefore, you should only use a high frame rate if you really need it. A very low frame rate of 24 frames per second, on the other hand, results in a less fluid image but looks more cinematic because most feature films are shot at such a frame rate. I think the default setting of 5.3K and 30 frames per second is a good compromise to start with. If you selected 50Hz under anti flicker before, the available frame rates will change. Instead of 30, 25 appears here and instead of 60, 50. Also important is this first line above. A normal video file has a format of 16 to 9. If you select 4 to 3 or 8 to 7 here, the field of view at the top and bottom will expand, but your shot will have black bars on the left and right. The 8 to 7 format is particularly interesting if you are not sure whether you need the video in a horizontal or vertical format when shooting your video. Vertical is of course suitable for social media or TikTok for example, so you could use a horizontal or a vertical crop from your video, but for the beginning I would recommend the 16 to 9 format. Under lens you can set the field of view. White is the standard field of view of the GoPro. As you probably know, the GoPro has a fisheye lens. This makes the extremely wide field of view possible. However, this type of lens leads to strong distortions. This doesn't bother me in action shots because it creates a very immersive look and I love the wide field of view. If the distortion bothers you, you can set the field of view to linear. However, this results in a crop, which means that the field of view becomes smaller. With linear with horizon lock, the GoPro will always keep the horizon straight, no matter how hard you turn your GoPro. This leads to a particularly good stabilization of the shot. Superview and hyperview are particularly interesting. Superview gives you an even wider field of view. It is bigger than the field of view wide, especially on the upper and lower side. On the other hand, there are particularly strong distortions at the left and right. This field of view is well suited for POV shots, for example. Hyperview is another step up from superview. The field of view becomes even bigger and the distortions increase even more. For the beginning, I would use white. Here on the right, you will find the settings for stabilization. As you probably know, the GoPro has excellent image stabilization. There is little reason to change the on setting. If you increase the stabilization to boost, the performance of the stabilization improves again. But this leads to a strong crop. The field of view becomes smaller. This only makes sense if you are going to get a very shaky shot. Auto boost will automatically activate the stabilization mode boost when necessary. You might want to consider it. I rarely use the other settings below in video mode, but I'll briefly explain what they stand for. With scheduled capture, you can schedule a recording, so the camera will automatically activate and start a recording. With duration, you can limit the duration of the recording. The camera will therefore automatically stop recording after a predefined time. Hindsight on the other hand causes your GoPro to record continuously, so when you press the shutter button, the 15 or 30 seconds before pressing the shutter button are also saved. With the timer, you can delay the start of the recording by a few seconds, and with zoom, you can digitally zoom into the image, which however leads to a reduction in image quality. Some of these features are good for recording time lapses, such as scheduled capture or duration. In video mode, as I said, I hardly use them. If you scroll down even further, you come to the Protune settings. This is a series of advanced settings. Since this is a beginner's tutorial, I won't spend much time on it. There will be more detailed tutorials on my channel on how to get the absolute maximum out of your GoPro. But there is one setting that I would always change, and that is the setting for ISO maximum. In low light conditions, the GoPro will increase the so-called ISO value. This makes the camera react more sensitively to the incident light. However, a high ISO value leads to image noise and thus a decrease in image quality. This is particularly noticeable from an ISO value of 800. Shots with an ISO value of 1600 are actually no longer usable. For this reason, I would set the maximum ISO value to 800 or even 400. Now that I have explained the most important settings in video mode, I would like to say a few words about the shortcuts that we have already seen. With the first shortcut at the top left, you can adjust the frame rate and enable slow motion. For example, 2x means 2 times slow motion. For this, the frame rate must be increased from 30 to 60 frames per second. Here you can set the lens or the field of view. In the top right corner, you find the stabilization and the icon in the bottom right corner allows you to zoom in digitally. In addition to capturing videos, the GoPro is also ideal for taking photos and time lapses. Here too, I will briefly explain the most important settings. Let's start with the photo mode. The user interface looks similar to the video mode. Currently, the preset photo and the field of view white are selected. Tap again on this field to open the presets menu. Here, there are three presets. Photo for normal photos. Burst to take a burst of photos in a few seconds. You need this if you want to take photos of fast action and capture the right moment. Night photo mode, unlike photo mode, favors longer exposure times 
and lower ISO values. This gives better results in low light conditions. However, you have to use your GoPro on a tripod to prevent camera shake. If we open the settings menu with the pen to the right of photo, we can again edit the respective preset. There is actually only one setting here that is important, but I haven't explained it yet. The output. Here you can choose between super photo, HDR, standard and raw. In super photo mode, your GoPro will automatically process the photo. The type of processing depends on the photo and is done autonomously by the camera. Most of the time the photos get more clarity and contrast and therefore a more striking look. The HDR mode on the other hand overlays several shots with different exposures, thus preserving details in the very dark areas and details in the very bright areas. In RAW mode, in addition to the JPEG file, a RAW file in the GPR format is also created. This file contains more information than the standard JPEG file. It is therefore somewhat bigger but is better suited for editing the photos. However, you need the right software for this. If you do not want to edit your photos yourself, the super photo mode is recommended if you like this kind of processing. All other settings available here are basically the same as the settings in video mode. In the default settings in photo mode, you have a shortcut for the timer, for the field of view, one for the output we just discussed, and here in the bottom right corner, there is another shortcut for the digital zoom. And with that, we switch to the time lapse mode. In time lapse mode, there are again different presets. The default settings are the time warp preset, a resolution of 4K, the automatic speed and the field of view white. If we now open the presets menu, we see that there are even six presets here. The standard presets time warp, time lapse and night lapse and three very special presets for star trails light painting and vehicle lights. Basically to understand, in a time-lapse recording, photos are taken at certain intervals, for example one photo every five seconds. These photos are then combined into a video file. The result is an accelerated representation of reality. Normally you should use the camera on a tripod for this otherwise the resulting video will look very shaky. However, the time warp mode is intended specifically for situations where you want to move around during a time-lapse recording. The camera then takes care of the necessary stabilization of the video. If we look at the settings, there is also a particularly important setting here, the speed. As I said in a time-lapse recording, reality is shown accelerated. 2x under speed therefore means a two-fold accelerated representation and 10x a 10-fold accelerated representation. But be aware, you can't slow down the video after recording. The automatic works well, so you can start with it for the beginning. With speed ramp, on the other hand, you have the possibility to reduce the recording speed during the recording, so you can switch to a normal video recording or even a slow motion recording. We have already discussed all the other important settings here in video mode. In the standard time-lapse mode, however, you should not move the camera during the recording, but use it on a tripod. Here too, there are two special settings. Under format, you can choose whether the camera should immediately create a video from the photos or whether it should save the photos individually. If you select video, you can immediately play back the time-lapse recording as a video. The photos on the other hand must be stitched together into a time-lapse recording. I would recommend video for the beginning. The interval on the other hand refers to the time interval at which the photos are taken. If you want to take a time-lapse shot of clouds, I would recommend 5 or 10 seconds. There will also be a detailed tutorial on the time-lapse mode in which you will learn how to create the best possible time lapses with the GoPro. The night lapse mode on the other hand is suitable for low light recordings in a similar way to night photo. Long exposure times are preferred here. You must therefore use a very stable tripod. Star trails, light painting and vehicle lights are intended for very special situations and purposes, whereby the name already reveals the intended use. I will also go into these shooting modes in more depth in a future tutorial. All the settings we saw in the Hero 11 are basically also available in the GoPro Quick Cap. No additional explanation is needed because the Quick Cap is basically very similar to the menu on the GoPro. What you should know, however, is that you can also edit your videos very simply and easily with the Quick Cap. The Quick Cap has a simple editing program, Studio, which can also use artificial intelligence to automatically edit a certain number of clips and merge them into one video. Try it out, it works really well. Now, before you start shooting, I would like to recommend a few important accessories that I think you should definitely use. The GoPro is an action camera and is obviously designed to be used outdoors and for exciting activities. However, the body and of course the displays are not as robust as you might think. Dropping it once will cause scratches and could destroy your display. That's why I would definitely recommend such a protective cover and screen protectors made of tempered glass. You can often get them as a bundle. As I said, you will find links to all the important accessories in the video description. The mount that is included in the package is by no 
no means sufficient to exploit the possibilities of a GoPro, you should definitely get a pole. With a pole, you can take a lot of different shots and most importantly, you can also film yourself. My pole of choice is this one from Insta360. Yes, I know from the competition, but it just works well and it's small when it's folded up, so it's easy to store. Then I would recommend a whole range of other mounts. For example, a chest mount for skiing or cycling or a handlebar mount. It's best to start with a mount kit. These are not expensive and contain the most important mounts for the beginning, except for a good pole. Okay, I think you're now ready to take your first great shots with your GoPro. Give me a like as feedback if the video was helpful for you. If you have some time left and you are interested in what I think are the most common GoPro beginner mistakes, you can also watch a corresponding video of mine on this topic. You can also support this channel and buy me a coffee using the link in the video description. There will be more GoPro tutorials to come. So stay tuned and see you next time.